Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, December 18th, 2020, and today we're going to be taking a look at the amount of Republicans who have acknowledged a Joe Biden victory in the 2020 presidential election. So it shouldn't be too surprising when you're looking at the election results that Joe Biden did in fact win the election. He won 306 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 232. The electors have cast all of their votes and all legal issues have been resolved. And Joe Biden will go on to be the 46th president of the United States of America. But there still are a pretty considerable amount of GOP congressional members that have still yet to acknowledge a Joe Biden victory. In fact, two Republican members of Congress have said that Donald Trump has actually been the winner uh, or is the winner of the presidential election. Now, these are Republican lawmakers, incumbents that are uh, going to be seated sometime soon with many of them being reelected in the House of Representatives and many of them actually just elected uh, or sorry reelected in the United States Senate elections some of them are actually up in 2022 so when you look at this amount the fact that 208 Republicans have still yet to acknowledge the election results after the Supreme Court has thrown out Trump's case after Trump goes 50 and 1 in court litigation after uh, you know there, there are no faithless electors and there's no overturning from even Republican governors or Republican secretaries of state that's when we should have started to see Republicans drop the president-elect Biden line in some type of political statement. Now, I understand many of them are loyal to Trump. I understand many of them are afraid of losing the Trump base. Donald Trump's base is still very confident in a Donald Trump victory in this election, despite absolutely nothing proving uh, that uh, claim whatsoever. Donald Trump has a very strong grip on voters, the likes of which a, a single Republican nominee has never had. Besides, I would say Ronald Reagan, to be completely honest with you. We've never seen this type of idolization behind a candidate. We've never seen this type of commitment from a voter base that would... Uh, undoubtedly vote with Donald Trump, even if he did stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot someone. And that is something that the Republican Party is afraid of. That's exactly why we started to see calls for uh, the complete, I, I, I guess, just destroying the entire Republican Party. I don't even know what to say, because this is the party that Donald Trump is a part of. He is the Republican president, and we are seeing members of the Trump wing actually call on the entire, you know, redo of the uh, Republican Party talking about a new America First agenda, something that would completely uproot hundreds of incumbents that weren't America First from the beginning. There were plenty of primary challengers. I, I will say that there were plenty of primary challengers that were pro-Trump, but some of them did not defeat the Republican incumbent. It's very difficult to defeat a Republican incumbent, but uh, as soon as the Trump wing labels a Republican as a rhino, which means Republican in name only, it's very possible that they do actually get primaried in a future election or at least see some type of primary opposition where otherwise, if they were to jump onto Donald Trump's uh, train or pretty much say nothing, about the election results, then they probably would be safe. You know, being silent in this time is probably better politically for these Republicans, but not at all for the American people, because we do need to move on. We need to move on as a nation. It's not a partisan statement to say that Joe Biden won the election. It is not a partisan statement to say that members of Congress should acknowledge that, because these 208 Republicans represent tens of millions of, Repo uh, not Republicans, sorry, tens of millions of voters, tens of millions of American citizens. And when your representative, the person that you are sending to report to Washington, is telling you, or just not telling you that the election is over, despite it being over a month ago. That's something that we really shouldn't see. That's something we never see or would never expect in America. And that's something that we try to hold our standard, hold our election standard up really high. But this is really hurting us as a country. And I really think that when we're talking about this large amount, 208 is not 10, 20, 30 of a, a small wing of the House of Representatives. No, this is a lot of people. But I want to talk about its implications and why I don't think that the Republican Party should be doing this for much longer. I understood in the beginning when Donald Trump was saying there was voter fraud. A lot of the Republicans played it safe. And I, it made sense because they these are all politicians. They know what to say in order to appease their constituents. And that's exactly what they're doing now. But some of them actually took a better route, I would say, an easier route. Uh, they said that they were going to wait for the election results. They didn't say Trump or Biden won. They said Trump very well has the right to contest the election results as long as he provides proof. And that's the thing that the Trump campaign never put forward. Not a single member of the Trump legal team or a former member of the Trump legal team presented evidence to a court. That's exactly why the Supreme Court, despite it being 33% Trump nominees, denied it immediately in a vote of 9-0. to zero. There were some, uh, I believe, Scalia, uh, not Scalia. Why did I even say Scalia? Uh, sorry about that. Um, I believe two justices said that uh, this would be okay if they had proof, but 
since they didn't, they weren't going to consider it whatsoever. So really, it was they voted it out nine to zero. And when you're looking at the number of other things that happened, there was no proof ever provided. In the 51 court cases, there was never any proof provided. Even under oath, they had said there is no voter fraud. It's just a question as to whether or not these ballots were filled out correctly. And they were in traditionally uh, or reportedly Democratic areas, Philadelphia, you know, major cities. And they had asked for certain ballots to be thrown out uh, under the assumption that they were incorrectly filled out or they should not be counted because they used a different color than the signature asked for or their signature didn't match. And when they reached out to the voter, the voter said, that's me. I voted. Uh, and then they said that was shouldn't happen. That You know, there shouldn't be a curing of ballots, whatever the argument was. That was the only thing that was used under oath. And the fact that now 208 Republicans have still not referred to Joe Biden as president elect, I think is bad for democracy. It tells a lot of these American voters that this doesn't matter to these Republicans. And I think that's something that also is really going to hurt the Republican Party moving forward. Look at the 2022 Senate map. Not to say that the Democratic Party is going to defeat Marco Rubio. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they're going to defeat Lisa Murkowski. But they absolutely could defeat a Kelly Loeffler, uh, an open seat in North Carolina, pick it up for the Democrats, defeat uh, the Republican incumbent in Wisconsin, pick up the open seat in Pennsylvania. But Florida and Alaska could be somewhat competitive, especially Alaska with ranked choice voting. Florida, if Ivanka Trump does actually decide to run, go ahead and check out the uh, domain registrations down in that state. Four new domains registered, Ivanka Trump for Senate, Ivanka Trump for Florida, a number of domain names. But when you're looking at the competitive races, there's you know, not that many. There could be way more. Back in uh, 2018, I would have told you there were maybe a handful of competitive races. There ended up being over 10 uh, in 2020. But this election, probably won't see anything super significant, but let's talk about the Republicans who have actually acknowledged um, Joe Biden uh, being the next president of the United States. So uh, it's not too surprising for the people on this list. It's usually people that are either outgoing or were just recently elected. Roy Blunt is actually up in 2016. He will probably face opposition because of these comments, but I don't think he's going to lose. Mike Braun was elected in 2018. Uh, Shelley Moore Capito was reelected this year. Uh, so Bill Cassidy, Susan Collins, John Cornyn, Joni Ernst, these are all known names all of them re-elected recently deb fisher uh re-elected re in 2018 ron johnson is up in 2022 so this may not help him amongst the trump base but also they're not going to vote for a democrat and if they are voting in the midterm elections they're going to vote for the republican senate candidate mitch mcconnell this was a big one to president trump i didn't make a video about it because i didn't really want to entertain this discussion about uh, election um i guess election fraud and talking about how joe biden is not actually the legitimate president but I didn't even see how bad the numbers were today. I didn't even see the numbers, how, uh, how bad they were up until just a few hours ago. When I saw that 208 number, I was baffled. I was baffled that we are over a month and a half from the election. We are closer to the inauguration than we are to the election. And I think it's just very interesting and very upsetting to me personally that these American voters are being told that or somehow told through their silence that their vote didn't matter or that Joe Biden is not the legitimate president. And I think that's something that really hurts American democracy, no matter what side of the aisle you're on. That's exactly why we see a number of Republican senators start to say, don't contest the results. Don't vote against the certification um, for those uh, statewide officials or those local officials. A number of Republicans starting to push for the uh, just complete certification and complete, you know, over and done behind the 2020 election. And that's what we see from Mitch McConnell. That's what we see from a number of these Republican senators, Mitt Romney. Uh, we see Lisa Murkowski. Uh, Lisa Murkowski is up for re-election in 2022. So is Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio actually, I think, is trying to run in 2024. So it makes sense that he would want to uh, oust Donald Trump. So there's some type of party fatigue. I think that's you know, it makes sense. He didn't flip on this one. He was uh, not immediately, but he did acknowledge a Joe Biden victory. He didn't initially uh, entertain the idea of Donald Trump winning the election. Tom Tillis was just reelected back uh, in 2020. Pat Toomey is an outgoing incumbent. He's retiring in 2022, but that's an open seat. Can't imagine that would help uh, any type of Pat Toomey endorsed candidate amongst the Trump wing. But if you're looking at this list, there aren't that many, um, you know, representatives and senators. The majority of them are on the unclear slash no answer. In fact, two of them have said that Donald Trump won the election. That's Representative Mo Brooks, an Alabama representative. If you, re if you recognize its name, it's because he ran for, uh, not president, sorry, for Senate back in 2017. And then we have another Republican from Arizona. But other than that, we don't see too many Republicans saying that Donald Trump won the election, but there still is a very, very large amount that have said that they have not uh, decided or that they do not know who has won the election. A lot of them ignoring this when they have a very ample opportunity to say the election is over and allow their constituents to move on because many of them represent conservative districts and conservative states. Many of them have a responsibility 
to the American people to try to ensure that there is confidence in our election process. And when we're looking at the candidates that are up in 2022, Ron Johnson, the Republican, he has said that the election is over. I think that could hurt him amongst Republicans. He wasn't going to do too well amongst Democrats. But no matter what stance you take on the Republican side, you are going to be, I would say, screwed over. Because no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you will be vilified by either members of the Trump wing or the members of the traditional GOP. And that's a very difficult position that Donald Trump has still put these candidates in, even though he won't be president when they are running for re-election or when they are up for re-election in 2022. But he's putting them in a position where if they don't tackle on to Donald Trump or if they don't agree that there was election fraud or that Donald Trump had won the election, it's very possible that they use their silence or their words against them in a primary, in a potential primary, especially in some of the more Trump wing states. Lisa Murkowski has accepted the election results. Um, we actually can go ahead and take a look at where Richard Burr stands. Let's go ahead and take a look at North Carolina. This is a retiring seat, so it's not going to be super, super important uh, on the way that this um, senator is standing, but didn't respond to the request, did not say anything so far, I think that could actually help the Democratic Party. If we're looking at Kelly Loeffler, you can imagine that she isn't exactly the person to go to to ask who won the election, but neither David Perdue or Kelly Loeffler have said that uh, Donald Trump has lost the election or that Joe Biden has won the election. So North Carolina, uh, not, sorry, not North Carolina, Georgia, Kelly Loeffler will be up in two years if she wins this election. Raphael Warnock will also be up if he wins this election. Pat Toomey has also said that the election is over, that he has, uh, you know, acknowledged a president-elect Biden victory, congratulated him, and Marco Rubio has as well. So for those competitive races, we actually see members of Congress starting to uh, will open up to the idea of a potential Joe Biden presidency. Number one, it would help them because they are Republicans in an expected Republican wave year. Number two, they cannot win on an extreme platform. It makes sense maybe for a Wyoming representative or a North Carolina or North Dakota senator to say that Donald Trump won the election or even say that Donald Trump did not lose the election, that the election is not over. That makes sense. But when we're talking about swing states, when we're talking about swing districts, it makes sense that some of these representatives are unclear slash no answer or some of them even saying Joe Biden won the election because realistically, the majority of Americans believe that the election is over. The majority of the American people believe that the election should be over and done and that Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. And they're right. They are right in that statement. But also, there's a very significant portion of the American population that does not believe so. And a lot of these Republicans are only reiterating that belief that Joe Biden did not fairly win the election or that Donald Trump potentially won the election, uh, 210 of them. Exactly. And in terms of those who oppose or support uh, Donald Trump's continuing efforts to claim victory, 129 support it. They're essentially saying the same thing that we've seen. I mean, it's politically smart, but uh, it doesn't really help the American people move past an already grueling and very long and contentious campaign season. But 129 of them are essentially saying either they believe there's voter fraud or that they support President Trump and whatever he decides to do as long as there are votes or, or sorry, as long as there's evidence in what Donald Trump is saying. So far, no evidence, and none of them have acknowledged Joe Biden's victory. Many of them are very quick to encourage Donald Trump to actually follow through with this. Some of them, I think, are eyeing up a run in 2024, and they think that this actually helps them. Some of them owe their entire election to Donald Trump, whether that's getting them through a primary, such as Tommy Tuberville, or some of them just really need to uh, you know, cling on to Donald Trump in very, very conservative areas. Otherwise, they could be primaried. Forget the general election. They could be primaried. And then... If Joe Biden wins a majority in the Electoral College, will you accept him as the legitimately elected president of the United States? The answer, no, from two of them. And you can imagine which two. In fact, it's the same exact two, the representative from Alabama and the representative from Arizona. So that's not too surprising. But when we're looking at those who um, support Donald Trump's continuing efforts to claim victory, well, it's a very, very long list, much longer than the list of those who say that Joe Biden won the election. But in terms of those who oppose, we have an outgoing senator, Lisa Murkowski. That's not, you know, too unexpected. Mitt Romney, not unexpected. John Thune, somewhat surprising. Pat Toomey, not unexpected. Um, you know, Will Hurd from Texas, he's outgoing, makes sense. Two outgoing uh, Republicans, makes sense. So when you're looking at those who say that President Trump should stop, that we should move on from this election, that makes sense that they are saying that because they believe Joe Biden won the election and that Donald Trump should not continue going. But the fact only 10 out of what, you know, a very significant amount of representatives and senators alike, I believe, what, 249 Republicans in the House and Senate, only 10 of them oppose Donald Trump's continuing efforts, only 37 of them saying that Joe Biden has won the election. That's worrisome. 
that is kind of scary for American democracy because we are going to see a very large amount of people just trusting in the American political process. And with 208 representatives, uh, senators and representatives representing over 30, 40 million American citizens, possibly even more, I find it very unfortunate that many of them have decided that they are not going to acknowledge a Joe Biden victory in what was one of the most important elections of our lifetimes. With the highest turnout we've seen in over 100 years, they still have not accepted the election results despite court litigation failing, the Supreme Court shooting down Donald Trump's case, and also the Electoral College voting. I can't find a more through the Constitution pathway for this election to happen, and still an overwhelming majority of the Republicans in Congress have yet to admit that Joe Biden has won the election. That's not a partisan statement to say that is not good for American democracy. It's not good for American trust in democracy, in our election system, and entirely, it's not good for America. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already. And check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my post-2020 election videos. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.